Hello and welcome to the Faith Club Podcast by Faith World TV with me, Mary Alison Momo, where we'll be having engaging, inspiring, insightful, captivating and thought-provoking conversations with leading figures from all walks of life. So tune in weekly for your dose of inspiration. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Faith Flow Podcast. I hope you are well wherever you're listening or watching us from. My name is Mary Alison Momo, your host. And today I'm just so honored to be sat with an amazing gentleman, Stuart Freeman. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Mary. It's great to be here on the other side. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. What an honor, Stuart. How are you? Yeah, good, you know, good. Amazing. Amazing. So Stuart is chairman of TMH Media and um, he's such an amazing, amazing person, but also a businessman. So Stuart, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, I was born in um, Chadwell Heath in uh, not far from here. Oh, wow. Um, Got married at 21, had um, three children um, with my lovely wife, Belida, and um, moved to Suffolk and have lived in Suffolk um, for probably over 40 years now. Amazing, amazing. Wow, Stuart got married at 21. Yeah, <laughs> early. <laughs> no, um, to be honest, I, I, that is that is beautiful. It's always what I always wanted to get married, <laughs> get married young. Um, yeah, so growing up, growing up in, you know, Chadwell Heath and uh, going about business, work, and then finding love, family, starting family, and then a business. Yeah, it wasn't always <laughs> like that. It uh, wasn't that straightforward. No, it wasn't that straightforward at all. Uh, when I met my wife, she was um, a singer, and uh, so I was really uh, looking after the children. Um, um, we had a, a young uh, boy and a, a girl, and then... Uh, She'd go off singing and I'd be looking after the kids. Wow. That's so, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I've had Belita sing. She, yeah. she has such a wonderful voice. Thank and you. we did a, a few harmonies together at one point. Yeah. She's such a beautiful person. So how did you get into media and advertising? All right, okay. So um, my parents always wanted the best of me. Yeah. So they wanted me to be... Um, the pilot in the RAF, I failed that. Every <laughs> every time they wanted me to do something, I failed. Um, but they really were like, this is what you should do. And um, after about the fifth failure, I, I was too scared to go <laughs> without a job. Yeah. So I walked into um, a uh, jobs agency yeah. and... Uh, I said, look, um, I'm looking for a job. And the girl said, well, what are you good at? And I went, not a lot really, just talking. <laughs> so she said, I got just the job for you. Wow. So um, I found myself um, at the uh, Sunday Times mm. going for an interview. And, and um, I met a really lovely young lady and uh, very professional. And we were having a chat and... Uh, then she said, sell me that pen. <laughs> and it was like, oh. and uh, I must have uh, impressed. I got the job and started work at the uh, Sunday Times on the telly ads, um, um, working on the magazines, and mm -hmm. um, it went from there, really. I was really shy. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was the most shyest person there. And we used to have this sales trainer yeah um every friday yeah and i used to dread it because she'd do she'd do charades with us oh yeah and uh, <laughs> uh one day i was in the office and i was sort of sitting back and she said you use the alternative hmm. you say i'll meet you between two and half past two yes <laughs> i'm talking to you <laughs> 
I think mean, after after about six months, all my shyness was knocked out of it. Absolutely. So there you go. I think she's so weird, and that's why she had to be a little bit hard on you. Uh, yeah. But I worked with some great people there. So was that before marriage or after? That was um, uh, before and during. And during. Yeah, I got married while I was still there, and yeah. um, I then went to work for a newspaper called the East London Advertiser mm -hmm. in the Mile End Road in East London. Yes. And um, I met all sorts of characters there from the Cray Brothers <laughs> to uh, um, Steve Harley, yeah. um, who in those days was known as Steve Neese, who, who later formed um, um, Cockney Rebel, and a guy called Ivan Waterman, mm -hmm. who became the... Uh, showbiz editor of the News of the World. Yeah. And uh, yeah, lots. Wow. And uh, um, the Levy brothers, in uh, whose son Daniel is the chairman of Tottenham. You wow. know, I met, well, yeah, I met lots of uh, Ronnie Lane <laughs> yes. from uh, Small Faces. His brother Stan had a, had a stall down the Roman Road in East London. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, um, my health wasn't too good. I kept on getting bronchitis mm. and uh, the doctor said to me he said you know he said I can give you all the antibiotics in the world he said but you should move to the country mm. and it was um Steve Neese that got me a job on the Essex County Standard in Colchester yeah and we moved out to Suffolk and mm. really never come back mm. so yeah I was I had a career in newspapers and mm. from there I went to uh, um uh, back to London, but by train, I used to commute and um, I joined a company called Media Sales Bureau. Mm -hmm. And uh, my job there was to uh, work with all the entrepreneurial free newspaper guys. Yeah. So that, that was um, uh, really my early media career. Awesome. Wow. It sounds very, very interesting. But you also sound very driven because this is not something that, you know, you went to university for. It's just using your natural talent, your God-given talent to, to you know, you know, put food on the table. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, in, in, really, Mary, I have, a, I have a view. You see, when you're in school, mm -hmm. they will teach you science, maths, English, but nobody teaches you how to make money. Yeah. Nobody teaches you to be an entrepreneurial uh, uh, businessman, and and that's why I think we um, we don't see a production line of those type of people coming through. Yeah, but that's yeah. <laughs> so, but I think my grounding yeah. um, amongst the Jewish people um, in East London mm. really taught me a lot. Taught me how to barter and hack or yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're very entrepreneurial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. you know, if we if we say about Jewish people, they're um, real. There's some really good businessmen. You know, yeah. um, people like Philip Green who uh, had the uh, Debenham. Yeah, yes. and uh, uh, and um, um, the guy on The Apprentice, Alan Sugar, oh, yeah. all those, you know, and those were the people that I was amongst, the Leafy Brothers, yes. um, for one, and Harvey Luderman, who had Paul Simon's mm -hmm. uh, um, stores in those days. Yes, 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 Paul Simon's, yes, yes. Wow. So how did you get then into um, TV, television? Right, okay. Um, well, I was, I ended up being... Managing Director of um, Media Sales Bureau, mm -hmm. which was um, one of the divisions of the holding company. And the guy I worked for was a real entrepreneur, but he was also a risk taker. Mm -hmm. And the holding company went bust. And it was like a domino effect. Yeah. So all the other companies went and I found myself from having a great deal of money <laughs> to um, mm. without a job. Mm. And uh, it was in 1989, I think. Yeah. Um, and it was the start of the recession. Mm. And nobody wanted a, a person in Suffolk with uh, <laughs> um, that sort of experience. Mm. You know, there wasn't any, any real media jobs going. Mm -hmm. So... Um, 
Yes. I opened the doors at um, TMH Media with my son and um, uh, the partner I had at the time, business partner, and we formed the Media House, which became um, TMH Media. And it was like uh, trying to get, get back. But by that time, all the smart money mm. had gone out of um, – the press. Yeah. And it was about the time that Rupert Murdoch had launched um, Sky. Mm -hmm. So I went round um, um, all the TV networks saying, you know, I've got uh, no experience, but I can sell TV. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, but we need somebody more experienced. Yeah. And um, I met um, my ex boss for coffee one morning yeah, and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm trying to get into TV. And he said, um, I know uh, somebody that might be interested. He said, I've worked on their uh, proposal for them. Mm -hmm. And um, it was Rory and Wendy Allen mm -hmm. cool. at the Dog TV. Yeah. So I hadn't been a Christian that long. Yeah. So I drove all the way to Newcastle. Mm. I even took my pastor at the time. Mm. I had this presentation. <laughs> and Rory just looked at me and said, no, don't don't worry about that. He said, um, um, you come highly recommended mm. and uh, you've got the um, the contract. Wow. It wasn't much of a contract at the time <laughs> because they were on air yeah. two hours a day. Yeah. You had to start from somewhere. Absolutely. And I think at the end of... Um, 12 months, um, we'd sold about $250,000 of airtime. So it, Amazing. it really, that's where it really started from. Amazing. So if if you like, I will say this to people, yeah. without um, God TV, they'd never, they wouldn't have been a TMH in, mm. in the way it is now. We'd have wow. probably um, struggled along, but, but God has... Uh, Yes, his own so, agenda. Yes, he works in mysterious ways. That is that story is so touching. I, I'm so glad that I didn't even hear it before, because <laughs> yeah. it's really touched me. Because obviously, um, I think I just uh, come into England when God TV was just starting, and it was such a comfort sitting in the living room every day and just watching God TV. Obviously, the two hours at first, and then you know, it then grew into a major channel, and it's just such. Such a blessing, you know, Rory and Wendy yeah. were, were to us. Yeah, We had our ups and downs because they were very mm -hmm. passionate, strong people. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I had a bit of passion as well. But, they, yeah. you know, I was getting behind their vision. But I always remember Rory saying to me, Stuart, <laughs> we want apostolic churches. <laughs> and I think, apostolic. <laughs> what does that, what is yes. what does that yes. have to do with yeah. it? So, I, you know, I struggled a bit at the, yeah. at the time, but yeah. yeah, we had a great, great relationship and now he's not in God TV, but we spoke mm. um, a few months ago, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, I, I think... Um, for all the, the differences of opinion sometimes we have, I've got a lot of respect for what those those two did. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. They got, I think, Christian Dom, Christian TV. Christian yeah. TV. yeah. They, and everybody, <laughs> everybody followed them. Yeah. You know, there was, um, and it was great for, for me because um, being the only Christian media agency, we picked up. Um, the launches for Revelation and Inspiration yeah. and and all those networks and and started to do business with them all mm -hmm. and we still do today. Absolutely. Why did you focus? Did you mainly focus on on Christian media or you did uh, um, secular? Media well, it as was well? it was difficult because um, um, my partner wasn't a Christian. Okay. And um, pardon me and. Um, it, we weren't getting along that well. But when you're in a partnership with somebody, mm -hmm. it, it's you can't really get rid of them, you know. There's, yeah. And uh, he came to me one day and he said, I'm leaving. I want to leave. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not happy with all this Christian media we're doing. Okay. And I think it was a was a God thing, you know that? Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, 
yeah, we went on, we went on from there, and uh, um, as I say, it's it's what it is today. What it is today. So tell tell me about the you know obviously we've seen the launch of TMH Media, and um, <clears throat> how how has it grown over the years? Um, well, we were we were doing okay, and I say okay, but you know sometimes you get tired, mm. and and I really believe that um, it needed a, a fresh impetus. Mm. Um, and my daughter at that time had joined us and was working and uh, with us, and she had loads of ideas, mm -hmm. and um, I decided. Um, that um, I wanted to hand over the the running of the everyday mm. um, company working. Mm. So I made her managing director. Yeah. And within um, two years, she doubled her turnover. Wow. And, um, and I was glad that I did that because I see mm. so many young people mm -hmm. working for their mums and pops that are – that are strangled, mm -hmm. really. And what, what eventually happens mm -hmm. is they get fed up and leave. Yes. And um, I didn't want to lose, I didn't want to lose Emma. Mm -hmm. um, it was important that, um, you know, that uh, she stayed. And yeah. uh, she's still there today. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's like, still yeah, running it. You gave her yeah. the room. The room we, we have, yeah. uh, she, she does things different to me. Okay. Uh, I have to say that. Yeah. Um, but... Um, we, she's a lot younger, so she would do, you know. Yeah. Uh, but we we get on okay. We have the occasional <laughs> clash, as she'd probably tell you if he, she was here. But mm -hmm. um, I remember when she took over, we we were dealing with um, a guy who wasn't, I guess, um, totally honest in business, mm. and. Um, but he was spending lots of money. And in fact, I think at the time he was our biggest client. Okay. And she sat down and she said, I'm taking over, but I don't want to deal with uh, this guy. Mm. And I was like, what? <laughs> she said, he's honest mm. and, and God won't bless us. Yeah. And um, we resigned the account and within, I think, about two or three weeks with more than doubled what he was spending. Wow. So there you go. I like what you said there. God won't bless us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because obviously the client is yeah. not the other doing... thing. Yeah, the other thing she did was, um, you probably may not know this, but Marks and Spencers, when it was owned by mm -hmm. the Jewish family, the Seaths, okay. or Seths, um, used to tithe 10% of their profits. Mm. And it was a very, very wealthy company. Yeah. When the new people bought it, they they did a lot of cutting. And one of the things they cut was the um the, the tithe on the profits. Mm. And at that time, Marks and Spencers went really down. Mm. And uh, Emma Emma told me the story. She mm. said, "And we want to um uh I want to tithe ten percent of our profits to um worthy." Worthy courses, and we still do that today. In yes. fact, it's it's over there. Absolutely, you know? yeah. yes, yes. It's, uh, Just so amazed that yeah, the, the, charity, of, uh, the charity companies that, that, that we did. we support. Yeah, and, and she says that's the best day of her working life when she gives that money away. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's always wonderful to see the email, you know, of the charities that you have given yeah. to, and you know how much. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, yeah, obviously you've spoken of working, you know, with your daughter, Emma, Emma Roses, and she's managing director. And you also work with Bex, Rebecca. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, that's, a that's a challenge as well. <laughs> so how is it like? Yeah, that is good. She's how, how very creative. Yeah, how is it like? She is very creative yeah. and she's such a wonderful yeah. person. So how is it like working with your, you know, your daughters, your family? Um. As I say, really good because they're young, they got ideas, yes. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and uh, and uh, you've got to give, you've got to give them the rope to to put those ideas into practice. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's good. We as I say, we just like most families, mm. you know, we have the occasional 
stress and uh, disagreement, but we 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 don't take our buckets and spades away. We 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 talk it through. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's such a blessing to be yeah. able to work with your family because, yeah. you know, you but you see them more often than just seeing them at home or at yeah. the time, like Sunday yeah. roast or something yeah. like that. Yeah. We don't normally talk business when we go out. We yeah. just do it. But during the day, yeah, we we um, we look at ideas. And, Amazing. Yeah. Proud of both of them. So, TMH, so uh, when we walk into TMH Media, the office, I see um, all the subsidiary companies, you know, that are under TMH Media. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about those companies? Well, we have a, um, property, a property division, TMH um, um, Property, which um, we invested in um, a property, really Emma's, Emma's idea. Mm-hmm. We, we bought... Um, a uh, property in Suffolk with a um, with a uh, great deal of land. Mm. Um, we developed that. We sold some of it off for housing, mm. um, which brought money back into the company. And we we have a number of um, buy to lets awesome. which we rent, which we rent. But it's it's. It's good because it safe it safeguards us. Mm. I go around a lot of ministries, you know, mm. and and one of the things that the, the pastors when they talk they always say, oh, "Do business with these guys; they're consistent." Yes, yeah. and and you see, unfortunately, some TV networks start and they go off air mm. because they haven't got the uh, financial backing mm. at the end of it. So yeah. you know, we haven't got the money of um, God TV or. TBN or Daystar, mm-hmm. but we've got to we've got to compete with them. Yes. So if you see one of the uh, one of the subsidiaries of TMH Media is Faith World TV. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Faith World TV, yeah, and that's uh, that's where you're yeah. you're coming. You know, you've been yeah. referring to. Um, yeah, Faith World TV. Just how did we start? How did Faith World TV start? How did you? Find okay. It? Yeah. Well, um, I had a heart for. When I, when I came into Christian media, mm-hmm. I had a heart for the African Caribbean ministries. Yes. And um, I'd go, and, and, and I think it was a two way thing. They were very, very open to coming onto TV because they wanted to build their churches. Mm-hmm. And I'd go around to um, God TV or Revelation or whatever the network was, and and say, look, i got this ministry here, um, and I really want to put it on TV. Mm -hmm. Um, They may not have the money to buy your airtime rates at the moment, Mm. but would you give them a start? Yeah. But I was in the, um, what can I say, I was in the hands of the TV network. So if the TV network didn't like the program or wasn't prepared to cut their rates, that was the end of their dream. Yeah. And um, I, I'd feel for them. I really would feel for them. Mm. So I was um, in America um, at the National Religious Broadcasting Conference in um, Orlando. Mm-hmm. And I met this guy and he owned Faith TV. And he was dealing through a company who were putting all the satellites up called WRN. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I didn't realize at the time that WRN was a Christian company. Um, but uh, he came up to me and he said, um, I heard that you you sell airtime. He said, um, I've got a lot of problems. He said, I've got this network in the UK. I've got these contracts mm-hmm. and I can't afford to keep it going. Um, would you sell my airtime? Mm-hmm. He said, would you take a block? Mm-hmm. Um, I said, yeah, um, but what are you going to give me? He said, you can have any time you like. <laughs> so I completely <laughs> shot it and said, well, if you give me 6 till 10 p.m., okay. I'll take it. And um, that's how Faith World was launched. Is that 6 a.m. to 10 p.m.? No, 6 p.m. 6 to, p.m. to 10 p.m. I had those yeah. four hours. So I started the network. Yeah. And um, before long, I met um, a guy called... Prophet Samson Irundi. 
mm-hmm. um, who's a lovely guy from Webick in Nigeria. Okay. And he'd always wanted to have a, a TV network. And he said, come on, he said, I'll take the other time okay. and we'll um, go in as partners. Mm. So we that's that's how it was born. And we... Um, our first studio was with his church. Mm, mm. The only problem was after about a couple of years of this running, he got into um, really big financial trouble. Okay. And um, I had to step in to keep the network going. Yes. And that was a uh, not easy at the time. Mm. But, you know, we, we got there. Yeah, God is good. Yeah. So basically your passion and your, you know, compassion for African, Afro-Caribbean pastors um, caused you to birth Faith World. Faith yeah. TV. So, yeah. So you see what actually happened when these guys, when these guys wanted to come on TV, mm-hmm. I, I could put them on. Yeah. The only, the only problem there was that um, I had, pastors that were on other networks yeah. and they'd come up to me and say, Stuart, I don't want to go on this network anymore. I want to come on Faith World. Yeah. And I'd say, why do you want to do that? Well, the network's hot on the streets. It's the network to go on. Yeah. And uh, we'd established that. Uh, mm-hmm. And so it, it built very um, quickly and successfully. Yes, yes. How were you able to undercut uh, their pay? Because obviously on channels like God TV, they wouldn't some of them would not be able to afford the the airtime. How were yeah. you able to you know break it, even in business? It's a bit like if you imagine um Prime up, up against next. Yes. We were a no frill station, so we okay. didn't invest in programming in those days. Okay. We had wall to wall ministries. Mm-hmm. Um we had um inexpensive f- facilities like mm-hmm. the studio was um very, um, I wouldn't say looked inexpensive, you know, okay. we wasn't, um, it wasn't the greatest, but we, we worked and, and got those people on air okay. and, uh, it was, they couldn't have, they couldn't have afforded to go on to those expensive networks at the time. Yes. And we weren't a threat to anybody yeah. because, um, a lot of those ministries, to be frank with you, they wouldn't have taken. Mm-hmm. And how have you seen, um, how, how has the network grown and the pastors themselves that you gave the opportunity, Any how have, how have they grown? Their oh, we've, we've got some wonderful stories. Yeah. You know, people um, have been my clients for whew, mm. 20 years and I've seen their churches grow. Yes. I've seen their their kids raised mm. and, uh, you know, I'm dealing with some of their children now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's basically it's it's through relationship. Yeah. Relationship is the most important thing in business. Mm. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'd deal with one pastor and he'd say to his friend, ring ring Freeman <laughs> and he'll get you on air. And, yeah. Um, um, that's, that's how it all started, really, word of mouth and, and relationship. And, and giving people good deals and, and helping them build their churches. Yes, absolutely. It's um, something that I always uh, wondered. Obviously, having uh, well, met you like eight, nine years ago, and it's just the pastors that um, you have worked with over the years. Um, some of them do come back, have airtime, take a break. And, yeah. still, and then come back. It's just what you've just mentioned there, having good relationships with yeah. clients. If you fall out with somebody, um, there's a there's an old ad, adage, old um, saying, win the argument, lose the sale. So if, if I do have a difference of opinion, mm-hmm. I always let them think they're right <laughs> because then – they can walk back. You better row with somebody. You ain't going to walk back, are you? No. You, 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 you know, you just let them, uh, give them the freedom to come back. Yeah. And I've had a lot of uh, people, sometimes it's financial, sometimes mm. um, they want, as you say, take a break, but mm. they come back and we have a a lot of media that they can buy. We, I mean, I mean we also sell... Um, um, Outdoor media, which is billboards, buses, yeah. taxis, 
and uh, some of them will promote their conference. We do online, mm -hmm. um, social media. So yeah, there's a various things that they would they would come to us for. Awesome. So one of the things that we've discussed, you know, that makes business successful is relationship. Are yeah. there any other tips, you know, having been in business over three decades now, any other tips, you know, that make business successful? Yeah, and your vision of what you want to achieve. Yeah. Your vision is important. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to, if you want to go for it, um, and you want to, I don't know, whatever, whatever your vision is, mm. then stick at it. Yes. And, um, the money will come. Don't focus on the money. Mm -hmm. Focus on the vision mm. and uh, and focus on getting better and better and and be the best. I mean, I want Faithwell to be the best TV network in the UK. I want Brilliant. it to be better than all the others. Amen. But I'm focused on what we're doing mm -hmm. and not what they're doing. Yes. Do you know? True. I, I, I just think that if we're good and... Uh, Try new ideas. Sometimes they don't come off, but try. Mm. You know, if you have 10 ideas and one of them comes off, that one may make you a bit... Explode, yes, yeah. absolutely. And uh, that's what I stress to the people I work with. Yes, absolutely. So, um, obviously, 30 years yep. Yeah, in business and in media yep. and Christian media. Yep. Um, how have you manage to remain relevant because obviously trends do come in uh things do change yep. have you managed to remain relevant by being ahead of the game <laughs> that's that's all i can say to you wow. is looking at um um looking at what people are watching work with young people mm -hmm. because uh, <laughs> the, the older that. people will well, you know, uh, be <laughs> traditional, won't they? Yeah. People are not afraid of ideas. Yeah. You know, that's how um, online media got started, social media. Yeah. You know, it was um, not everybody watches TV. Some mm. some of the younger people will watch YouTube. They don't even turn the TV on or they watch TikTok or Insta Instagram they're on, you know. So, yeah, um, trying to be ahead of the game. Uh, Absolutely. And then... Um, then you'll win. And don't be afraid to uh, try new ideas. Mm -hmm. And with TV, look at it because TV is a brand. It's a brand building exercise. Yeah. Every home has a TV set yes. or virtually every home. Yeah. So you know it will build brands. Mm -hmm. So combine it with um, what the best of online media can do. Absolutely. You can't exist one without the other. Absolutely. Yeah. As a business person, do you have that like uh, that natural or what can I say, like a gut feeling of you know that this would work, or I I have to you know get that opportunity? Is it is it something natural or like do you try and fail? My daughters would probably tell you that I'm a visionary, mm -hmm. but what I would tell you is every visionary needs needs a structured person. Yeah, that's why. You know, some visionaries go bust because there's no structure behind <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah. So it's a combination, really. Okay. But gut feeling, yeah, I'm not afraid to try ideas. Not mm. not ideas that you know are completely off the wall, but yeah. uh, some of them sometimes they don't work out. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've had some really great ideas that I thought would really really go, but like, unfortunately they don't. Mm. And um, it's people, isn't it? Yeah. It's, Will people buy that? Mm. And you think, wow, they will. It's like the launch of anything. Yes. If you've got a new product in the supermarket, you do all your research and you do everything and then you put it on sale and then <laughs> nobody likes it. Yeah. But, you know, that happens. That happens. You've just got to dust yourself down, pick yourself up and go again. It's that again. You read these um, stories of Richard Branson and Alan Sugar and all these Great entrepreneurs have made money. Mm -hmm. They've always had failures there mm. before before they've made it. Don't yeah. be afraid to fail. Absolutely. You know, we, we sometimes we sometimes are afraid to fail, don't we? As long as we learn from it. Yeah. You know, just um just keep going. I like what you said there that you need you can be a visionary, but you also need structure. Yeah. Could you uh, expand on that? Well, um, so I I'm great at talking to you yeah. and um, say you've got a ministry and I would say to you, we've got to do this, this and this. And we put this in. 
Mm. But the people behind me mm. are the people that write the contracts. Yes. <laughs> put the um, uh, put the thing together. Yeah. And um, the dream is then fulfilled. Mm -hmm. You get a visionary doing the structured things. No. <laughs> so it's the day to day. Yeah. Day to day. Yeah. No, that I would. Do that. I would. I can go out and and sell the vision and idea to somebody. Yeah. And then somebody puts it all behind. Absolutely. All me and and. Um, I've got some great people that, yeah, that, 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 do, that. do that. Yeah, do that. that structured. Yeah. yeah, you know, I've got, yeah. Amazing. Uh, yeah. So talking about, uh, obviously, business, any highlights? Any highlights in your uh, yeah. media? People I've met during, yeah. my, during my career. Yeah. And you never stop learning. And, yes. you, and believe it or not, you still get excited. Mm. You know, I mean, I'm, I met a young Ghanaian guy the other day that, yeah that had uh, started a skincare product and he was employing all the, um, I think, female farmers in Ghana mm. um, to um, uh, produce his um, skincare yeah. and giving jobs to them. Yeah. I mean, I've met some uh, great evangelists yeah. and ministers, even half an hour in their mm -hmm. In the with their time, you feel wow, mm. uh, yeah, get get excited. Yeah, I've met, yeah, you know, I've met lots of great people, and I tell you, the I always remember one thing. Here's a here's a nugget for you. Yeah, the bigger the minister, the more humble the person. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it's always if I meet people that are a bit, you know, full of themselves, mm. it's all those people that are really small. Mm. The big guys are. A humble. I met Amazing. I met T D Jakes once. Yes. <laughs> Only once. Mm. I was dealing with a with a fantastic guy. Yeah. A guy called Tommy Tenney. Yeah. Tommy who wrote Tenney. a book called The God Chasers. So they love the book. Um, Tommy yeah. was my client for many, many years. Mm. And um um he was at NRB, the National Broadcasting Um Conference, and um he said to me, Stuart. He said, um, where are you? He said, I'm coming over to, to meet with you. Yeah. And I said, I'm at so and so bar. Yeah. He said, Stuart, I can't meet you in a bar. <laughs> I said, so he said, look, I'm walking along with T.D. Jakes. Come outside and I'll introduce you. Yes. So he he stopped and he said, uh, Stuart, this is Bishop um, Jakes. Um, and he said, this is Stuart Freeman. And Bishop Jakes turned around to me and he said, Stuart, what do you do? And he spent about four or five minutes mm. asking me all about what I did. And I was like, well, mm. you know, this is incredible. Yes. And uh, those five minutes um, with him was was brilliant. My friend Jonathan Miller actually went and preached at his church, mm. not for T.T. Jakes. I think it was for his daughter. Okay. And he was getting back on a plane and T.T. Jakes rung him. He said, Jonathan, where are you? Mm -hmm. And Jonathan said, I'm at the airport. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I want to have dinner with you. Wow. <laughs> and uh, his driver come over, picked Jonathan up and his wife, and they had dinner. Jonathan missed his flight. Yes. He said it was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. You know, have, but yeah, well, lots of people. I was T.D. Jakes I've yeah. met. I've yeah. had lots of, uh, lots of other people, some people I've worked for mm. in Europe, and I've never met them. Benny Hinn, I used to do mm. all his um, uh, crusade uh, promotions, but mm. I've never met met Benny Hinn in my life. Mm. I had an idea what he was like, yeah. but I knew his um, PA very well. Um, so, yeah, John Bevere probably had the greatest influence on me mm. because um, I wasn't a Christian at the time I met John Bevere. Okay. And um, he he was, I suppose, my mentor. So I used to pick wow. him up from the airport. Wow. And he'd... Uh, We'd talk, and that was the best one-to-one -one preaching I ever had. He's an amazing yeah. preacher and an amazing him and his wife. I did. Yeah. Um, I did all his conferences in in the UK, and we'd become, I would say, firm friends. Mm. Um, but we used to we used to have a lot of um, a lot of fun. He told me <laughs> he told me once. He said, Stuart, if you go to church and the Holy Spirit's not there, <laughs> just walk out." Yeah, I was so good. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and then, then yeah. one day he was, he, he'd finished preaching and we were sitting down. It was about 
I don't know, half 11, 12 o'clock. Yeah. And he started telling me about sing mm -hmm. and how God rates it. He said, God don't rate a, a murderer no more than a pickpocket. Mm. And I was like, really? <laughs> you know, uh, I used to know, and people used to call it severe bavir. Oh, His okay. teaching was very... Very but, yeah, he's lack of great, weight. Yeah. yeah, some great times with uh, mm -hmm. with John, and he probably, um, yeah. and Awesome. Awesome. I just um, like the way you light up when you talk about people. You really yeah. love people. Yeah, people is yeah. part of your, yeah. your business, isn't it? That's what we do. Yeah. That's what we do business for, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we win, we win business on, um, on probably – um the price yeah um john maxwell always says that you win the first deal on the price and then relationship takes over absolutely and, uh, and that's how it is yeah absolutely wow <laughs> thank you so much for telling us about your highlights in business and obviously obviously with highlights they are challenges how have you ma maneuvered you know the challenges that you've faced in business well you you get challenges every day of your life whether it's business or personal. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I wish I could say to you that um, I handle them well, but I think um, in the recession of 89 and then there was another recession, I think early two, 2000s, yeah. you learn. Mm -hmm. You learn how to work through yeah. recessions. And it's a, it's a bit like this. If you don't, if you haven't experienced the hard times, mm -hmm. you can't enjoy the good times sometimes. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's handling them and um, not panicking. And yeah. I think that your faith, um, my faith, um, plays a big part in that yeah. because, after all, you know, all I'm doing is God's work. Absolutely. God's TV net. Yes. Yeah. But I ain't going to let it fail. Mm, and if he does then that's, that's what he wants to do. I don't know that, <laughs> you know, if I knew the, the workings of God, I'd mm. be like... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, yeah, not, yeah. not panicking. Mm. Um, um, handling things. Um, trying not to get stressed. Yes. Because I think stress is a killer. Absolutely, yeah. Relaxing. And I think it's good to, to relax. Mm. Um, yeah. And having date nights with my wife. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that brings me to the other question. You know, obviously we've spoken business, but, you know, it's just your personal life, Stuart. Um, you've been married since the age of 21. Yeah, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Can you tell us um, the secret to, you know, happy marriage and also to stay that long in marriage? Yeah, hard work. <laughs> <laughs> My daughters always say that I punch above my weight, <laughs> and I think, yeah, I think handling uh, Mrs. Freeman, I'm always, <laughs> I'm always in the doghouse, but I try, uh, I try, you know, oh. yeah. No, seriously, yeah. Um, having, um, yeah, having date nights and um, and spending time with her because, yeah. um, you know, it's it's important to me, mm. you know. Happy life, happy wife, or is it happy wife, happy, happy life? Happy wife, happy yeah. life, yeah. 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 yeah so. Watching you, I think it was your 70th birthday that we celebrated. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember you got up and, you know, you know, got her into the dance floor <laughs> and you were dancing under the evening lights <laughs> at the hotel. And I just watched you and I said, wow, they are um, this old in marriage but they're still, you know, having fun and they're still dancing chin to chin. It was just so, so touching. You got to. And yeah. I think the secret is also um, um, mixing with young people. I mm. mean, I've got um, three children and uh, nine grandchildren, yes. seven uh, um, uh, who are biological and two, two step uh, grandchildren. And I have a lot of fun with them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, family life is important. Yes, absolutely. I guess I was going to ask you, uh, what keeps you going? What keeps you youthful, Stuart? It's like you're not, what keeps you you're, not you're not retiring anytime soon. No, well, I, <laughs> um, I was talking to a friend of mine yeah. actually today. Yeah. And, uh, 
He's a great guy, really successful businessman and a great friend. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a home in, in Marbella in Spain. Yeah. And I've had that for 14 years. And I spend a lot of time in Spain. Mm -hmm. And um, I always say to people, it um, lengthens your life. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And he said this to me this morning. He said, sure, I really believe you <laughs> living in Spain lengthens lengthened your life because he used to come out with me and now he's he's bought his own place so that was yeah. uh, music to my ears and in yeah. fact um, <laughs> I'm there over Easter and we're having lunch just the two of us mm. so, yeah mm. I spend a lot of time and and uh, and relax mm. uh, and rest work. work hard and rest yeah well, enjoy life yeah well, <laughs> uh, yeah there is a there is an allergy to that I People say to me, work hard, and I say, well, you've got to work smart. Absolutely. You can work hard, but you've got to work smart. Mm. And I'm not so sure that um, some people get that because you see there's a lot of people, I think, that get taken advantage of. Mm. You know, I, I, I tell you this, the the Uber drivers, the Just Eat people, yeah. the people that are, that are working for um, – all these supermarkets stacking shelves and that, mm. you've got to be a bit smarter. Mm. You've got to get out of that, mm. you know, because um, all you're doing is making them rich. Mm. I'm not saying you don't start there, yeah. you, but but try and be, try and at least um, think of how you're going to get better. Mm. You know, it, it's important. And, yeah. uh, it may be that you have a hobby, you know, it might be like, you love walking the dog. Mm. Where well, you could get a business walking everybody's dog. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, You're doing something that you love. Yeah, yeah. yeah do something you love. Mm. I mean, I love media, and um, it, it's probably a hobby to me. Mm. My wife thinks I work far too hard, <laughs> but I don't look at it as well. Yeah. You know. Talking to you today, yeah. and seeing how you you're coming along with the. Um, uh, Podcast is brilliant. Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> thank and, you. And, Absolutely. You know, people give people their expressions and yes. the, let them run with it. Yes, absolutely. You know, I, I look at um, I look at churches, and the successful churches are the churches that don't do the heavy shepherding mm -hmm. that give people ideas. I, mean, I was talking to Alfred Williams mm -hmm. at um, Christ Faith Tabernacle, yes. and um, went over there and spent. The morning, and he was telling me how he's um, been a father to a lot of uh, his church um, congregation, and particularly the young ones. Mm -hmm. He's got them into business and into jobs, and you look at it, and it's a thriving church. Yes, yes. And, uh, he's he's there gently pushing them. I go to a um, well, I've seen another church. I don't want to mention the name, but it, it's not far from here where the pastor is is like everything goes through me. Okay. And, and none of the people have got – he doesn't realize that a lot of those people haven't got jobs. And, and if he was to concentrate helping them, mm. he'd have a thriving church. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think the church has a, has a big role to play in that. Absolutely, absolutely. And I guess that's what um, um, Rory was trying to tell you about apostolic, being interested in apostolic churches because, yeah, they give birth. They give yeah. birth to other churches. Yeah. I and mean, in giving birth to other churches, you're raising people. You're raising yeah. other pastors. You're raising other, you know, entrepreneurs. You're raising admin people. So, yeah. yeah. That's, what, that's what I've always tried to do. Yeah. At um, TMH, just give people their heads. Yeah, you know they might not do it like you would do it, or sometimes not as good as you. But they learn, yes. and then you've got seventeen, eighteen Stuart Freemans, and I yes. could sit there and say, "Wow, you know," <laughs> yeah. and uh, not not running around like a headless chicken. Yeah, I'm you know, sure. and uh, I always think you, if you've got the patience to be democratic mm -hmm. rather than autocratic, you can. Um, you can build a company. Amazing. Stuart, we are so proud of you. You're, oh, such, thank you. <laughs> you're such an inspiration. I've just been so blessed by this conversation. But before we go, uh, can you tell us about the future? What you know, what do you see Faith World TV or what are you planning? On Faith, Faith World, World TV. TV? Yeah. Well, I'd, um, well and TMH Media. <laughs> okay. I really believe that um um we gotta raise our game. Let's yeah. get bigger and better people into our studio. When I say bigger and better, 
let's hear from the more successful people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was talking to um, a couple of people the other day that work here, and I said, start at the top, get the top people in and work down. Mm. Whereas their ideology was, well, let's work at the bottom and, and get to the top. No, let's go to the top people. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the studio, we've got... Um, We've got the um, uh, infrastructure here. Let's test ourselves. Yes. I mean, I'm excited because we've got uh, some real top people coming in. Yes. Um, you know, and uh, we we'll continue to do it. As far as the TV network goes, um, let's uh, keep working to get um, some more great ministries in. Yes. And, and, um, be the biggest and the best. And once we've been the biggest and the best in Europe, let's go to America and Africa. Amazing. You know, so let's make it worldwide. Let Why can't we be like um, the Word Network? I'm very friendly with Kevin Adele at yeah. uh, Word. We talk most days, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a great inspiration. And he built that network in, in 20 years. Yeah. And a uh, phenomenal success story. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, we're getting get we're gonna get there. Thank you so much, Stuart. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everything that you have um told us about your life and how you've inspired us. Thank you so much for your hard work with TMH Media. Thank you. Thank you for being with us again. Thank you so much, our viewers. Until next time. See ya. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Faithful Podcast by Faithwell TV. Until next time, bye-bye.